um, supposed to be one of the most haunted places in New Zealand. Uh, it's like hundreds of sightings and very reliable sightings too. It's also a you know, shameful chapter in New Zealand history that I think a lot of people would rather forget. I wonder if we'll come across some dark stories. Here it is. This is built on, what, 60? 60, 60, 60 hectares. hectares. This is huge. It is it's huge. a massive place. And over about 800 people or something here mm. at some stage. This abandoned psychiatric institution is very similar to many that were shut down in New Zealand about 10 years ago. I mean, you can see just by the size of it, just how enormous it is. It honestly looks like a small town or something. It's huge. And amazingly, there's just been countless sightings, both while it was still functioning as a facility and after it's been shut down. I think tonight we'll actually focus on two of the larger buildings, the maximum security section and the nurses' quarters. And if you look in your folders, there's supposed photographic evidence of a ghost which is called the Grey Nurse. Right, and apparently that was taken by the um, building inspector who was in there at the time looking around because they were thinking of redeveloping the place. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. And well, I think behind this building over here is where the um, morgue it's situated. Yeah. In the way behind the tree. Yeah, right to the back. The surveillance setup for this place is proving to be quite the epic. Not only are both the buildings that we're concentrating on tonight incredibly huge in their own right, but inside they're like absolute mazes. So I figured we'd probably need around about two dozen cameras for this particular investigation. And even then, I, I honestly don't think I'm going to have constant visuals on Carolyn and Michael the whole time. Add to that that I noticed the walls are very, very thick, so I'm guessing that we may even drop out on radio contact at a few points throughout the night. Who said ghost hunting was easy? It does have a really weird energy about it, and I'm wondering if that's because I know a little bit of the history of the place. I feel a little bit like I shouldn't speak, or I shouldn't really look in the windows because it's, I don't know, occupied, even though it's obviously empty. A lot of people that would have come here that would have been misdiagnosed, mistreated, the abuse, uh, electric shock treatment, drugs, you know, sedating them, and not a lot of care. This location has actually um, been used for um, to shoot horror films, and a couple of local filmmakers who I'm actually going to talk to, they're going to tell me an experience they had while filming here, and basically it's something that even they can't explain. Yeah, this is where we were doing our location, Ricky, and we found the dentist chair just over here. It's gone now, but... And what did the dentist chair do? Um, it just... It was turned off, I guess, and it was just... It was unplugged, and then suddenly we were filming around it, and it just turned on. It just went... down a corridor and you hear these gurglings from the end of the corridor <laughs> and uh, I pushed Lance forward. <laughs> yeah, thank you mate. Just, I'm sure that's great. Let's go have a look. So Vaughn, you've worked here for several years and you now live here. Yeah. What's, what are your experiences here with the, the paranormal spirit world? These were drawn by my niece. Yeah. Um, she yeah. came out to see me um, one time here and uh, she was five and she drew these and they are actual pictures of people she drew that were coming up from down the back there right. from the horticulture area and through these bunch of trees here from the dentist area right. and then she came in and so told me that these were the nurses bringing the people up and that I shouldn't be worried because they can't come inside anyway, they're not allowed to. Right. Obviously there are no nurses working here and they haven't been for several years. Oh yeah, it's been so, closed like for yep. 30 years. So this is the morgue. Oh. I think the quicker I get out of here the better. Actually, this looks like um, looks like a fridge where they must have kept the bodies. So what we'll do? 
And what I'm doing is I'm setting this to a, a level. Basically records EMF and if the electromagnetic field changes, which is quite often what happens when there's spiritual activity, then that alarm will go off and um, we'll know that there's something happening down here. I think I'll get out of here as quickly as I can. Have you got your earpiece in? I do, yeah. Excellent. So you can talk to me. Mm -hmm. Now, on top you've got a camera, mm -hmm. a light at the front, and then that's a little camera looking right back at you to get all your emotions. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Right. Magnite for you, very important. Michael, I'm going to give you a camera as okay, well. Sure. Don't forget to click and shoot whenever you feel something. What exactly are these for? These are very cool. What these are are laser thermometers. Mm -hmm. okay. So what we have to do is point and shoot. If there's spiritual energy in the room, quite often the temperature drops. Right. So you'll need to know when that happens. Right, so and it picks it up instantly, does it? There we Digital go. Just reading. like that, and you're 22 degrees. Okay, you guys all set? Yeah, I think I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking yeah. right. You'll Come be on, fine. Caroline. All right, if you guys just go off to your starting positions, and um, I'll get you in the monitor, and I'll guide you through. You'll be talking to us, right? The whole time, don't worry. <sighs> All right, guys. Good luck. Take care. Cheers. Look after yourselves. Go for it. You're on your own. I can see everything. I've got the shakes like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> During its 60 years of uh, operation, this hospital was a place, it was a place to be feared. It was um, tainted by misconceptions about mental illness and of course, it being a hospital, many people died here and committed suicide. This is the laundry. Where patients were left alone to do their laundry and many a suicide happened in here. They had access to sheets and they hung themselves up on the railing. Oh my goodness. Is there any movement in this room? There's movement coming from one of my cameras in the kitchen. Is that where you are? I'm just trying to breathe. <laughs> But it feels like someone's actually following me, which is why I keep turning around. I can't hear anything. It's very, very quiet in here. But for some reason, you can just sense the screams. All the stories of the abuse and the suicide, they just add to this place's reputation, I guess. It's one of the most haunted places in New Zealand. Carrie, can you can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, Brad. What? Can you see that door that's to your left? My left? There's a door that's right behind you. Should I go in? The temperature's dropped dramatically in that room suddenly. <gasps> oh. bathroom. It is very cold in here. It's freezing. <sighs> I'm just taking photos. I'm now entering the nurses' quarters. It's a double-story building. It's pretty much in a state of disrepair. Now, when this place was operational, the nurses were pretty much themselves institutionalized, what with having to uh, live, work, and eat here. They also had to scrub the floors, stoke the boiler. There was a farm here that they had to work on, washing the windows, looking after the inmates, and of course, and sometimes they'd even have to cook when the um, chef wasn't here. I mean, it was no bit of an inmate themselves.
Now, the ghost that's reported to have haunted this place is called the, the Grey Nurse. It's an apparition that appears in many hospitals all over the world. This is where they would have endured electroshock therapy up here. There's artwork all over the floor that has just been left here. This one says, war, my anger, help about leaving here. It's obviously not a very fun place to be. Now it was in this wing um, that patients considered beyond rehabilitation were kept. And my torch keeps flashing. I really don't want to go in here. Die you. It's painted in wood like it seems like almost a blood red colour. Yeah, I can hear you, Brad. What do you want? Can you go back out the way you came, back to the front door? Because I've just had a um, one of the temperature sensors go off, a dramatic drop between the north and the south wing. It's saying it's dropped around about 10 degrees, so it'd be cool if you could go down there and just verify that. Oh, my God, it just feels so horrible down here. <laughs> Ugh. There's honestly just a feeling. There's a feeling of just absolute horror. I'm just watching all the doors. <sighs> They're the cells where people were shut in. And they were blocked out from the sun. The windows have got huge wooden bits over them. And the beds, or they call them beds at least. It's a wooden thing, sort of covered in carpet that can't be comfortable feels very claustrophobic. I'm going to assume that was just you that ducked in front of one of the cameras. Huh? That's cool. I just saw a flash past camera too, but I think that was you. I'm seeing really funny colorations. It's getting colder down here. There's a really strange presence in this room. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I can definitely feel some sort of presence in here. Hey, Caro, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, I really hate to do this to you, but um, we just had our EMF alarm go off in the morgue. Am I going in the morgue? Unfortunately, yes, you will be going into the morgue. Electromagnetic flux is peaking at seven milligauss. Now that may indicate some type of spiritual activity in the immediate area. Oh crap! So come out as soon as you can and we'll head off down there. I just got back out of that room. The temperature had definitely dropped and I didn't like the feeling that was in there. There was really a, like a presence or some sort of feeling that I felt really uncomfortable with. You were saying it was definitely colder down there? It's definitely colder, and there's a, a feeling of something really uncomfortable. I would not want to stay in this place. I can't believe this, Brad. Oh. Ow. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, yuck, it stinks in here. Oh, there's the table and the place where they. Oh, it's horrible. 
on here. Can you hear me, Carol? Oh my, this is... Brad! That's not good, we've lost contact. Michael, can you do me a favour? Yes, what's that? Um, I've sent Carolyn down to the, uh, to the morgue to, um, check on the EMF reading down there, but I haven't heard from her, so I might get you to come back out and wander down there and just check that she's OK. Copy that, I'm on my way. Oh, shivers. I am out of there. That did not feel nice at all. Hello? Hello? Brad, can you hear me? Oh. Hey, Carolyn. Oh my gosh. What was it like in there? Oh, it was horrible. Yeah. Get me out. This is way up? too Blair Witch. I'm getting out of here. Oh. Hey, Brad. Good morning, guys. Did you manage to survive your midnight rendezvous in the morgue? That was horrible. I didn't even want to go in there. Did you manage to get a tri-field meter reading for me? Mm -mm. <laughs> well, the reason I sent you in is because when the electromagnetic reading fluctuates like that, it obviously means that there's a change in energy which may indicate some sort of paranormal activity happening in the room. That's how it yeah. felt. There was something strange in there. Yeah. Well, it would have been nice to be able to support it with some sort of evidence like a temperature drop or a photograph, but obviously you're forgetting your job as a ghost investigator. <laughs> Well, let's go on and have a look at some evidence you did manage to get. Mr. Hollows will start with you. There's a really strange presence in this room. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I can definitely feel some sort of presence in here. For some reason, when I walked in there, there was a definite change of temperature, a different change of, of feeling yep. when I was in there from, from the rest of the house. Uh, it was a more of a... You could sense that something... I don't know, really, it, it felt like something had happened in there. This is just from your helmet, Cam, as you walk into the room. And you didn't even see that then, did you? What? What? We'll go for a close-up. Look down the right, bottom right-hand corner. And basically, it's just these little balls of light in the right-hand the right hand side there as they go up. <gasps> OK, yes, 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 yes. I definitely saw that this time. That's like little balls of light yeah. or something yeah. moving up and down. Exactly. The bizarre thing is, is that they're in a, they're in a pattern shape. Yeah. And they move consistently on the way up. Yeah. And I've gone over this footage a number of times and looked at you walking into the room. There is a window across from you. There is reflection from your torchlight going into the window. Yes, I saw that clearly. But windows don't reflect that much light. The light would actually go through the window. If it was a mirror, then we could say that possibly the light's reflecting off the mirror, hitting something on you, and then reflecting. But they were away from the window anyway. They were in a darker the corner. Side. Yeah. Here's the window, and they were at a corner. It's obviously using your energy as you walk into the room, mm -hmm. um, which oh. is, is how spirits manifest themselves. Ugh. It's not coming from anywhere. Carolyn, talk to me about the colours that you felt when you were walking through maximum security. They were probably floor to about my height, waving like this, but they were, it sort of was yellow and then blue and then green, sort of like rainbow colours all around, sort of like a prism of light, you know, when it's yeah. just been raining and you see that. It was like that, but all around me in the pitch black. I'll show you what I could see, which is this footage here. Mm -hmm. But there was nothing there. I couldn't see anything at all. Mm. But I'm going to show you from your helmet cam. I'm seeing really funny colorations. As you actually mention it, that's right there on the video. You mm. talk about it and it happens. I can't put it down to anything that the camera's doing because there would be no way you could see that if it was happening internally on the tape mm. in the camera. That would be ridiculous. Mm. But you talk about it, you see it, and we see it on video happening to you. Now, paranormal experts quite often refer to energy lights and they refer to the colours green, red and yellow. Really? And it's just a way of, of orbs or spirits manifesting themselves in light form. What we'll do is, we'll go on to the last one. This is the shower block. Oh. The bathroom. It is very cold in here. Brad, can you hear me? It's freezing. I'm just taking photos. 
There we go. So that's you. And you were taking a photo of the shower stalls, mm. sort of one by one, and because you almost felt like there was something behind it. And it's basically as soon as you finished taking the photos, you're out of there like a shot. I know. <laughs> I didn't want to hang around. <laughs> no, I, I could imagine. Now you were talking about the faces and being watched, and I didn't see any faces. That's the thing. You always wonder going into each location. Am I going to actually see a person? Am I going to see a face? But it, it's more a feeling that you're being watched, and so it's almost worse. So I mean, far. if you saw a face, exactly. So far, yeah. What if one came up on a photograph? It would explain how I was feeling. Right. Can you see that in front of you there? Ooh, there's an eye there. <laughs> there is an eye there. And it's almost like it's peering out. That was the photograph that you took when you were in there. And it's like it's peering out from behind one of those shower blocks. That's looking straight at me. <laughs> <laughs> what about the light around it? It's almost like bone structure of, yeah. a, of a skull, if you like. Mm -hmm. And so what I actually did was, just, just for a bit of an exercise, I went and I flipped, I flipped the image so you could get a full... Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. But isn't it great that we can still pick it up on camera and infrared and, and at the end of the day show you guys everything you missed and what would have scared you in the rooms had you seen it? I was on edge the whole time being in there, let alone knowing that was watching me. Well, good job, guys. Very happy with the footage that you got. Congratulations. It's amazing. I'm still speechless. Yeah, well, it certainly justifies this particular abandoned psychiatric hospital as a haunted location. So well done. So it piqued my curiosity, seeing those um, the little orbs or globes or rays of light, there's about 15 of them moving up. That really allowed me to uh, feel like I, at least I'm on the right track here. To see that it's not a trick in my own imagination and that something actually was happening that I couldn't see but could sense has made me just go, wow. I end up watching the footage over and over again. And even when you do see something coming at it from a technical point of view like myself, you're always looking for that technical reason of why it could happen until basically you, you exhaust all possibilities and you just have to put it down to a, an unexplainable event, really.